It is uh, July 17, 2001. We're interviewing Mr. Joseph W. Knieper. Uh, interviewer is Michael Akey. Videographer is Wayne Clark. We're holding the interview at uh, Latham headquarters. Uh, Mr. Knieper, where were you born? And St. Craig Road and, uh, and Colony. Oh, you're close to where you were born and grew up. Yeah. And uh, what did you go to school in Colony? Yep. Went grammar school and high school. Uh huh. And uh, you graduated from high school about when? Ooh. That'd be 41. 1941? I went to service in 43. Okay. Do uh, you remember um, where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Well, I was probably home or somewhere that's right around the area. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, were you, <clears throat> when you graduated from high school, did you go directly into the service? No. No, we had a a farm and I worked for these farmers, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so I, then I worked in the railroad for a year and then I went in the service in 43. Okay. Uh, uh, volunteer, drafted? I volunteered. Volunteered. And where did you go to basic training? In Camp Brooker, Alabama. Oh. A lot different than uh, Colony, New York, isn't it? Yeah. What was it like down there? Uh, for yeah. a colony boy? Well, we just kept busy. We didn't have much time to find out <laughs> what was on the outside, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just went to, uh, to cadre school there, you know okay. what I mean? And then I went to Camp Cybert, Alabama after that. Well, that's, that's where I went through everything, you know what I mean? Basic, and that's right. when we, got, we started a company there, or a battalion there, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, so how was basic for you? No problem. No problem. You're a farm boy. You're probably pretty good shape. Yeah, I had no problem. Um, how were the southerners down there? We didn't get out that much. You know what I mean? To be mm -hmm. mixed one, but we had we had no problems. Good, good. And once basic training was over, where did you go? I went to Camp Cyber then, and then we started a battalion. Okay. And this was 87? Uh, uh, 87 Chemical Battalion. Chemical? Is that a chemical mortars? Yeah. 4.2? 4.2 chemical mortars. Yeah. What did, uh, so you trained on those? Yep. What was that like? Well, I went to Hunts. They sent two of us to Huntsville Arsenal mm -hmm. in Alabama. At, uh, this was something new, right? Right. When we never had a camera. They sent two of us there to learn how to fire the gun, and we had to come back and teach the company, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. <clears throat> so, uh, how long did you train on the, with the chemical mortars? Well, they, most of them got there, let's see, in, uh, probably in May. Mm -hmm. And then we stayed there until almost a year before we went overseas. You know? Okay. Okay. And uh, when did you find out you were going to go overseas? A week before we went over. <laughs> they gave us all the way to t 10 days off, so yeah. we knew then that way. Yeah. <laughs> when you get time, when the Army does something nice for you, you know, there's another we aspect. Went, we went out of New York City. Mm -hmm. We went on a Queen Queen Mary. Oh, well, what was that like? Oh, it's something. No escort, no nothing. It was right. just no, like nothing could keep up to it. You know what I mean? Right. Now uh, you weren't concerned that uh, that's how the army was going to treat you for the rest of your career, did you? <laughs> no, we knew meals and that wouldn't <laughs> be like that. And uh, where you landed in England? In, in Scotland. Scotland. England well, didn't have a big enough port for Queen Mary or Queen Elizabeth. Oh, okay. And uh, from uh, Scotland, where did you go? Went to a little town of Tiverton, England. Oh, what was that like? Uh, well, it was army. When we got there, there were so many of us compared to that. But people treated us good. We lived in the people's house. They gave us a room, oh. two, two, two 
soldiers went to a room and mm -hmm. right in, the, in the people's home. You know? mm -hmm. They treated you pretty well? Real good, yeah. Um, were you assigned to a division at that point? No, we were just strictly a battalion at just that point. Battalion. We didn't get uh, assigned to a division or anything until the briefing the night before the debate. Really? The okay. Um, <clears throat> So while you were in England, you were uh, basically training? Still training, yeah. Still training? Not too much we had, they gave it. We had it pretty easy there. Mm -hmm. Did you get to see much countryside? No, not too much. Get into London at all? No. no. Um, Just into Plymouth. Okay. So around uh, May of 44, uh, are things getting a little busier just prior to the invasion? No, we didn't have much, we really didn't much for change until we, the day we went to get on the boat. You know, really? Uh, I went uh, over on the USS Bayfield, it was a Coast Guard ship. Uh huh. And it was a flagship of, for the Navy. Okay. And what uh, division? Eisenhower was on it too. Oh, really? Did you get to see him? Yeah, we all shook hands with him. Oh, that's nice. When we was going over the side, and he says, I wish I was with you. <clears throat> Did, uh, at that point, what division were you assigned to? Uh, Where were you? We, we still didn't know until we got on the, on the beach and who we was going to be assigned to. Uh -huh. you know what I mean? what, uh, <clears throat> what way were you, were you in? Did you go in on D-Day? Okay. Uh, which wave? The first wave. First wave. It's interesting. We also talked to another fellow in a chemical mortar unit that was in um, the first day. Um, so was what it, was it like going, what beach did you land on? On Normandy. Okay. Uh, was it Utah or... Uh, Utah Beach, or you don't? Uh, Omaha Beach? Omaha Beach. It's Omaha Beach. Mm. What was it like going in? Well, we went in on a landing barge, and we couldn't get all the way in. Mm -hmm. So we had to drop this front door and run off into the water. Oh. I drove a mud head in, so I didn't have to get in the water. Now, what was that? It, it, it's like a jeep, but it went on land or sea. You know, oh, yeah. really? So you got to drive ashore? Yeah. That was a pretty good deal. Well, the reason I drove that, the guy that was supposed to drive was afraid of the, so many landmines, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was so sick from the waves that I didn't give a damn. You know? <laughs> Anything was better than being seasick. <laughs> Um, so when you arrived on the beach, uh, what were the conditions like at that point? We had no problem right there. We had a pillbox we were supposed to take, mm -hmm. and we had orders that the one fellow was going to surrender. And uh, now that's hard to believe, you know what I mean? Right. And I had another little Danny D. Francisco with me. We, we got around the pillbox and got to the door. And when we knocked on the door, this guy opened the door. And surrendered? He surrendered, and the other ones wouldn't come out, so we threw a hand grenade in. That was persuasive? That made him move. <laughs> but uh, you actually knew ahead of time that they might, that somebody was willing to surrender? Yep. This was a briefing we got that night. You know? That's amazing. I never heard of anything quite like that. Um, so the, you can finally convinced everybody it was a good idea to surrender. Well, we we started. We had to move. We had to get off the the beach because uh, they knew we was going to land there right. then. Right. And we had to get back in, and we needed room to fire these guns too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, that night, the paratroopers and uh, gliders come in and. We had to stop fighting and help them. It mm -hmm. was really a bad mess. Uh, how many uh, how many tubes were there to uh, your battalion? 
Yeah. We didn't work as a battalion. We worked as a company. Okay. How many in the company? In the company, we had 124 in each. Uh, we had two battalions, so it was okay. 248 okay. plus officers in on it. Okay. So uh, the first evening, uh, you were assisting the paratroopers? We had a, as far as uh, being bombed and shot out, we wasn't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we really worked uh, to get the gliders and the paratroopers out of the trees and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Oh. And we did knock down Max Smelling. He was a pilot. But he was all right. Hmm. And... Uh, we sent him back from prison, and that night we got orders to take him back to the line and let him go. Really? Max Smell. Now, what was he flying? He had a little fire plane. Oh. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so, the second day, what are conditions? The second day, we had, a, we had a move to our right flank to get to Sherberg, because mm -hmm. that's where Patton had a command. Right. That was a port. So we didn't have too much trouble going that way because they only had one way out, so mm -hmm. they knew that they better be out of there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that wasn't too bad, but after we come back and started going towards St. Lowe and that, that's when we really had heavy, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, what was, your, um, what was your job in the platoon? I was a Ford observer. I wasn't a Ford observer when we went in, but we lost two lieutenants, and so I was next in line, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. And uh, I just had four guns that I observed for, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You were, uh, were you a sergeant at that point? Staff sergeant. Staff sergeant. And um, so you were an FO for four guns? Yep. Um, what the, so, so were you assigned to an infantry unit? Or? Different ones. We moved back and forth wherever they needed us. You know okay. what I mean? I was with uh, Colonel Van Fleet. You must have heard of him. Mm -hmm. Become a five-star general, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, he was quite a soldier boy and a nice man. So what was a typical job of a forward observer? Uh, he, he, the guy, whatever infantry man was in charge, He'd, he'd see an area and he'd want me to open that up, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So they can move through there. And he would say, fire 25 shells, in a gun or something like that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I would just, I would find it on a map, call back to my, to my platoon and tell them about, you know, about to fire and when to fire, you know? So what did you think of being a forward observer? It was very interesting. <laughs> I mean, we see some bad things that you wish you didn't see. Sure. But still, we knew we had to do it, so. Mm-hmm. Um, so was there generally good cooperation between you and the infantry? Yep. I never had no trouble with any one of the officers I was assigned to, you know. Sure. And um, as the campaign progressed, uh, at this point you were with what division? I really don't even remember what okay. division it was, because I say we changed. We might be firing in the morning, get ordered to load up and go 50 miles the other way, you really? know, and to join somebody else, you know. So. Generally, how were these uh, weapons transported? By jeep. We By had jeep. jeep with a trailer. Okay. And we had ammunition jeeps the same, you know what I mean? Okay. So it was mainly jeeps. The, the shell was 25 pounds each that we fired, you know. Did you work out? We fired. It was chemical warfare, but we never, we probably had chemicals available over there, but we huh. never knew it, you know. What type of uh, shells we, did you use? We fired HE mm -hmm. and white phosphorus and smoke. We used to lay down smoke screens, you know what I mean? Yeah. What uh, would you generally use the white phosphorus for? So we could laugh to watch them run them. <laughs> Now, you could start a fire, building on fire, or they was really scared of it, no kidding. When they see that flying through the air, they'd really take off. That was nasty stuff. Yeah, you're not kidding. Um, the Germans, I guess, uh, they really didn't have anything comparable to the 4.2 mortar. No. 
So it, it, it was a pretty effective weapon? At two miles, I could take uh, the four guns and zero them in on a target, 10 by 10, with the two shots for, for each gun. He could zero it in that. You're good. That's how good, I wasn't good, that's how good the gun was. <laughs> And how, uh, how good the gun was and how good the guys in the platoon would set that gun. <laughs> right, right. Now, did you uh, also do time on target? I I was supposed to, we were supposed to be up a week, the four observer, and then come back mm -hmm. and be relieved, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But Because we weren't assigned to nobody, so we had no meals or anything, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. Right, right. Um, so after, did you get to Cherbourg uh, eventually? Oh yeah, we got there within four days. Okay, and where did, uh, did you go after that? And we headed back towards St. Lo, okay. going into... Did you get involved in the fighting in the hedgerows? I can tell you a funny thing about it. I, I, I don't like to tell, I think, because I, I got a bronze star for it and I shouldn't have never got it, you know what I mean? The hedgerows was really, that's all you could see is from one hedgerow to another. Right, right. As far as, uh, you know, uh, personnel. So this morning I woke up and there's this 88 barrel right over the top of my head. <laughs> so everybody's asleep, you know what I mean? So I reached over and there was a captain there. And I hit him on the leg and just kept point and then I go, don't, don't move, you know what I mean? So he says to me, what the hell are we going to do? I said, well, we don't want everybody jumping up, you know what I mean? Right. So we got a, he got a bazooka and he says, I never fired one. I says, oh, Jesus. <laughs> so I put two shells into the tank. See, the bazooka wouldn't knock the top. Out. They, they was too heavy, you right. know what I mean? So you had to get them from underneath, you know what I mean? Right. And uh, we fired two in there, no movement. And so I go over to Hedgerow and get on the track of the, of the tank, and I threw a hand grenade in the, you know, mm -hmm. the turret was open and all. So I, I just couldn't figure it out. So I threw a hand grenade in there, and then I waited a few minutes, and then I got up on there, and I could see then that the thing must have been knocked out in an airplane or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, nobody moved. <laughs> and the damn captain writes me up for for Bronze Star. You know what I mean? Well, hey, you didn't know what was there. <laughs> what was it there? But he wrote himself up for one, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, the, the, just about anything could happen very quickly in the hedgerow because you just couldn't see. We couldn't see from one to the other, you know. So were the uh, the chemical mortars were rather useful in that kind of terrain? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We could just about land that shell wherever we wanted, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Must have been tough being an FO under those conditions. Well, it wasn't because we knew we would fire in the different zones of the hedgerow so, you know, we could move forward. You know? uh -huh. Okay. Um, how about you get educated fast when you're over there. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, about how long were you uh, fighting in the hedgerows? Oh, not too long. We mm -hmm. started moving into the cities, and then we went to Paris. They declared Paris an open city. And, you know what I mean? What was Paris like? Oh, it was something. The champagne, and that was great. <laughs> Um, and um, the, the, the French, uh, the Parisians were rather appreciative? In, in Paris they treated us great, but they opened the bars and you had to pay, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. but, uh, I mean uh, How were the French in the countryside? We didn't, we didn't have too much trouble. Believe me, we had it pretty easy once we got in there and got moving. Mm -hmm. And then Patton came, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And he stirred up the bees nest, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, he was our trouble trying to keep up, trying to keep the foot 
troops up with him, you right. know what I mean? Right. And he was no good without the foot troops, you know right. what I mean? So, so what would you think of Pat? Don't ask. Well, what did you think of Pat? <laughs> he was probably a smart man, but he took too many chances. Okay. I mean, for the individual foot troop, you know right. what I mean? Right. I mean, don't be scared, soldier, push on and all this, you know what I mean? That's when they started that thing when they used to say, uh, with my blood and his guts are... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> blood and guts. Yeah. Your blood and his. Um, so, after you got out of the hedgerow in Paris, uh, where, where did you go next? We, we went into... Now, this is over a course of... Uh, Two months or right, so it right, took us. Right. You know, we went into uh, we went into Belgium, mm -hmm. Germany. Okay. And that was on the border. We went into Chimay, Belgium, not Belgium, Germany. Mm -hmm. Chimay, Belgium, and it was on the border of Aachen, Germany. Okay. And we done something that was really. Funny, no, kind of funny to us, but not to them. There was two trolley cars sitting on the Chimay side. Mm -hmm. Between Chimay, Belgium, and Aachen, there's a big hill. Mm -hmm. And these two trolley cars sit there. So we put 25 rounds in each trolley car, push it up the hill, let it go down that hill into Aachen. <laughs> and you talk about explosion. <laughs> um, who's your commanding general at that point? Your division, do you remember? I, I was still under uh, Colonel Van Fleet. Okay, okay. I spent most of my time with him. You know, okay. But then, you know, was the, uh, he was the colonel in charge. Okay. And uh, when I went in, uh, the Teddy Roosevelt Jr. went in with us. Oh, what was he like? Well, I'm telling you, he was 65 years old and walking with a cane. You know, and he had no right being in there. Mm -hmm. But he was a gentleman boy. We had a mission once, and, and we're firing 25 rounds each gun, and uh, one of them broke an elevator screw in it. So I got the screw and started changing it. Mm -hmm. Up comes Roosevelt, the, the general, and my battalion commander, and he gave me hell because I didn't go to sloop. The general, you know what I mean? So I s said to him, uh, I got a mission of fire. I'm not going back there to salute him now. And uh, I, I said, how do, you, how do you know we're going to save by, you know, mm -hmm. uh, not this, this gunfire? So I said to, him, to the colonel, help us put rings on them things, on them shells. See, the shell. If you understand uh, mm -hmm. a mortar, you know, they're barrel fed, you know what I mean? Right. And they had the shell in it, and it goes off, and then they have rings that set for the distance and all mm -hmm. that. You know? So the colonel started putting them on. <laughs> so I'll never, after I got it all shoots me done and set up, I went back to the, the general and I says, uh, I put my hand out this, you know, go, go ahead and salute him. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, don't salute soldiers, shake hands. <laughs> and he said to me, that's the, the way to win a war, he said. Don't worry about the officers. <laughs> and he, he was nice, I mean. Mm -hmm. But then that's he good. died of a heart attack after that. Right. Um, let's see. Um, uh, what was Aachen like? Was that a tough city to take? No. No, no we moved in. By then, they was back just setting up for the last push, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And we knew they were setting up everything, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where were you uh, when uh, the Germans counterattacked for the bulb? Well, we was back eating. We supposed to have our uh, Christmas dinner. And uh, when it happened, we had a... Another division relieved us, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we're all sitting back in the back, you know, in the rear area for a break. 
and uh, boy, oh boy, these guys, our own guys come running down the street, and left guns, left everything. So we get orders to go back to stop the line, you know. Mm -hmm. right? So I was too lazy to walk, so I got on the back of a tank. <laughs> and when I ended up, I found out that we was surrounded. <laughs> the Germans had us, but we got out of there with no problem. You know? mm -hmm. We had a guy, McCall, General McCall. Yes. He, he had guts, boy. So uh, you were basically you were used to help plug up the uh, the, the gap or the bulge. Let's see, Ack, and you'd have been on the northern. No, we uh, we opened it up so we could start moving troops through. You know? Okay. But see, they just spearheaded one section. Right. And we had so easy to surround them, and you know, mm -hmm. they, and that was really the last big. Right. Did you, uh, did you deal with the British much? No, yeah. no. It was pretty much alone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We moved a lot. You know, different. Right. Location. Right. So you were basically used by whatever unit needed us needed. for. Okay. We were assigned to the, to the one infantry division, but any anybody in that division could use us. Any okay. company or any. You remember the division commander? No, I really don't. Okay. Probably tells you in that paper there. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. Um, so the final. Push uh, towards the Rhine. Um, you uh, were you involved in. And when, on the final push is, is when I got hurt. Okay. I I took this officer's place and went up there, and we had, we had a beautiful target. We had twelve German tanks all lined up in a wooded area. You know oh. what I mean? And we was the last. Observing from the last house in the, in this little town, mm -hmm. it was on the third floor, and there was nine of us. You know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. observers and, and officers, and, and all of a sudden, one of our tanks back up against the building, mm -hmm. firing, aiming towards where the Germans are. So like, it was a captain. He come upstairs and. And he puts his head out the window and he hollers to them, fire. I says, you goddamn fool, they're going to fire right back and get us all. Oh, don't be afraid, he said. So I started down the stairs. Mm -hmm. I knew that it was coming that back. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got down two steps, the shell come in, you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, I lost my radio. Our operator got killed. Everybody else got killed but me. Goodness. Just that I had that feeling, you know what I mean? Right. Well, you've been at it long enough. You knew. Yeah. You, you could pick up mistakes, too. Um, the, um, so this was in uh, January of 45? The war was right over just a week or ten days after that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, where where were you evacuated to after I, being wounded? I have no idea where I went. I know they put me on a jeep, and we're going down this road, and the shells start coming, and the jeep stops, and the driver and the other guy gets out and leaves four of us out there on the road. <laughs> but then they took me to an evacuation hospital, mm -hmm. and I don't remember anything after that day. Then you went. Did, did, uh, you were sent to uh, England. At first, I went to the Paris, mm -hmm. and then I went to England, and then I came from England. And they flew me home. You know. How was the care? Oh, the care was pretty good. We had good. Well, I met a girl from Ravenna, New York. Really? She was a nurse, and I think that kind of helped me. <laughs> well, that was great. Of all places, Ravenna. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I was just a year in the hospital. Uh, how long? A year. A year. Okay. Um, what were your feelings when you got hit? You, 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 
you've done that well so far. I really, I took, I think I took a good, I had no fear of dying or mm -hmm. doing something, you know what I mean? Right. I didn't know that I lost my arm because it was a big cast, you know yeah. what I mean? And my head was all bandaged, mm -hmm. so I didn't know I didn't have no vision. Mm -hmm. But this girl from Ravenna, she told me, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. But that set you back a little bit, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I was a whole year in a hospital between over there and the, and the States, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when you're in a hospital like that and don't know anybody, it's a... Must be tough. Yeah. So you, you really knew nobody for about a year in the hospital? Just everybody would meet each day or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, the hospital was where in the States? Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. So it's a bit far for family to come down. No, mine were there the next day. Really? We landed in Mitchell Field. Uh-huh. And then they send you to different, you know. So I, I call from, well, this is a funny thing that happened. They was going to take us out to eat, and this woman was driving this car that I was going to go in, so now I was in the front seat, and she says to me, where are you from? I says, New York. Oh, well, whereabouts in New York? I says, out in the colony in New York. Oh, she says, I got a cousin that lives there. I said, you do? She says, yeah, on no, Osborne Road in colony. I says, what's his name? She said to me, a horse bullet. I said, well, that's my uncle. <laughs> it, that was the strangest thing I... So you met all kinds of people. Uh, yeah. All sorts of connections. And I was with one of the fellow I went to high school with got, got killed in St. Law. St. Law was a, just a big mistake. Yes. I mean, uh, it was our, our planes that didn't know where they was firing, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And they killed a lot of our men. Mm -hmm. Killed a general, I think, too. Yeah. Um, so, what did you do right after uh, you got discharged? Right after I got discharged, my father had a farm, and I worked on a farm for seven years. Mm -hmm. And then finally I sold the farm, and. We went in the restaurant business. Oh, how was that? That's tough business. We've done all right, then we can. Mm -hmm. We had a good business, my wife and I. Mm -hmm. And the two kids, when they got old enough for you know, worked. And, but everything, I made the best of it, believe me. I get that feeling. The, um, did you, uh, have you kept up with any of your uh, the people you uh, served with? Yeah, that's that one letter, some right. guy that I was with. But I talk with maybe five or six of them every year. You know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Does the uh, unit have any reunions at all? Yeah. Oh, what do they hold? We we didn't we don't have it as a battalion because we didn't work as a battalion and right. we didn't know any of them guys. We right. just uh, last it was in the Poconos last year one came. Oh, neat. He didn't make it. Oh, the, um, let's see. So as a, um, the lifespan of a forward observer isn't a, wasn't a lengthy one. No. You know, like you say, you, you, they went through two lieutenants before they got to you. Yeah. So that was pretty risky work. We must, must have lost four before I, <coughs> and I did on my own. We didn't have anybody say, hey, I'll go up, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, and, uh, you did what, you, you did the job. Um, I wasn't supposed to be there, but I had, it, the way things happened, I had to be there. You know? Right, right. So in general, what do you, uh, what, what do you feel about your military experience? Uh, it was great, believe me. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, we had hard times, but we had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And 
you learned how to take care of yourself. You learned a lot of things, you know what I mean? That's you grew your... up real fast, didn't you? Yeah. The, um, and you, you have uh, a certain bond that, uh, you know, if, I guess if you weren't in the military, it's really hard to understand. Yeah. Um, I said we had a lot of fun. We had good guys. I had good guys, you know what I mean? And what would you do for recreation? Now and then, if they got enough time, they were going back, they played cards, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? They played Red Dog. And, and, uh, but not too much. If you got a chance, you lay down and went to sleep. <laughs> the, uh, where were you generally billeted? Uh, were you tents or were you generally in houses? If we could get in an area where people, you know, would ask people if we could use a room or mm -hmm. something like that, you know, if we had over three days, you know what I mean? Okay. If you only had one or two days, you just camped it underneath a jeep or alongside mm -hmm. a tree or something. Mm -hmm. so, um, and we didn't, well, I didn't get a chance to eat too much because uh, the guns would get served where all the men would, but I just carried. K rations, you know what I mean? Oh. My operator and I, well, that's all we ate. That whole week would be K rations. You really? Know what I mean? Now, as a forward observer, would you work in teams of what, two? You and a radio operator? Just, just me and a radio operator. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> and is, did you generally have the same operator? I had the same operator until the day I got killed. The day, I, the day I got killed, the day I got hit, uh -huh. the radio, radio operator I had was the lieutenant that was supposed to be up there. Really? I said, instead of taking my men back up, I'll take yours, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he, he got killed that day. Hmm. He, he wasn't supposed to be there, and I wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. But I, when I got hit, there was two. The Belgian family was still living downstairs. You know oh, really? Right? So they see, seen me coming down the stairs, and they took me and put me in the basement. Mm -hmm. And that night, the Germans did take over. You know what I mean? Oh, really? And uh, the next day, the woman tried to explain to me. You know, but but. They go take care of you. They go and take care of you. Mm -hmm. But a German officer come in, and he could speak English pretty good. You know? mm -hmm. Now he gave me morphine. He patched, you know, put uh, bandages on me and everything. Mm -hmm. And he says, "I'm not going to take you as a prisoner because we're li we're moving back out already." He says. Mm -hmm. So he says, "I'll put a gun outside the cellar stairs." So that's. That's what he did, and they came and then our own guys the next day picked me up. I was two days before they picked me up. I got hit on the 13th, mm -hmm. and this was on the 15th. But they consider me being hurt on the 15th because our troops didn't, you know, didn't know anything about the other thing. You know. Right. Is this a German infantry officer? He was a medic. Medic. Treated you well? Yep. Yeah. He could speak English pretty good. His English was a lot better than your German? <laughs> yeah, I, I managed it, you know, to, we had our little book with us all the time, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh. um, do you have any final thoughts? I don't regret anything that happened, it happened. Mm -hmm. um, no. The, Well, we'd like to thank you very much. You did a, some great material here. And we appreciate you both coming in. Okay. So tell us about Martha Ray. Well, we, in the camp, we had a, you know, a, like a USO. Right. Yeah, and her and a girl, another singer, Bonnie Baker. Mm -hmm. You probably never heard of her. No. 
<laughs> and uh, you know she's entertaining and all, and they have we have they have beer first and all that, you know. And at first, there happened to be two chairs at the table where I was sitting. Mm -hmm. So up comes Martha Ray. Hmm. Can I join you? Sure can. So she sit down, and I'm telling you, that is a beautiful woman. Mm. I mean, looks, and I mean, her mouth didn't seem the way it was and all, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And she really went, so she, she says to me, where do you go now? Do you go to non-commissioned officers club? I said, no, I never go. I always go with my guys to the PX. Mm -hmm. right so she said, could we go? Oh, Jesus, can you go? We <laughs> load her in a Jeep and take her over. <laughs> and then we really had a, a quite a night. And that, that really impressed me. No kidding. Mm -hmm. I just said I never. But then I was picked as a bodyguard for Franklin D. Roosevelt. Oh, really? And when he came into Birmingham, Alabama, mm -hmm. and uh, I was in charge of the 20 guns, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I got to shake hands with him. Oh, that must have been quite a... But I did shake hands with him home, because uh, his wife and him had a place right by our house, you know what I mean? Oh, did they? And uh, well, his uh, bodyguard had one, but mm -hmm. they used to go there a lot, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is when he was governor, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I, he impressed me too. He said, you know, we stand there with the, how you stand with the guns, right. you know what I mean? Right? He said, to call me home and says, Sergeant, tell them guys to be at ease, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and to think that these guys can be that, you know what I mean? Right. Hmm. Oh, and then one day I went swimming. Well, my Jeep driver, he wasn't sane or he wouldn't have been in the service, but, <laughs> but he was crazy. We went, it was a hot day. He didn't go in swimming, but I said, there was a pond there, a lot of guys in swimming. Mm -hmm. So I went in swimming. And when I come up, who the hell is in front of me? one of my neighbors. Really? Right there. And I, I said, Joe. He says to me, Bill, what the hell? I says, come on, we'll get out and have a drink, because we had the mm -hmm. cognac and that on the Jeep all the time. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so we go and <coughs> sit down, have a drink, and this Kendall said to me, are you scared? I said, no, I'm not scared. What the hell? What's, what has got to be scared about? So he says, well, I'm scared. I said, Joe, I'll walk with you later when we push, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, we're sitting on the ground up against the Jeep having a drink, and the shells is really going. You know? So he said, this Joe Candle said, Christ, they won't even leave you alone to have a drink, you know what I mean? <laughs> so this Pershing Jones says, oh, I got an answer to that. How you? He says, oh, come on, we'll move. So the three of us get up to move, and we move on the other side of the Jeep mm -hmm. and sit down. So Kendall says, now, what the hell is this going to say? <laughs> he says, well, I'll tell you, when you're sitting here, when you hear the whistle, you know they're going over your head, so you don't worry about it. <laughs> but this guy was, oh, gee. It, you, you met more people that local. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. But then when I come home, the, the friend that I was in a service with, the mother and father, he, he had a letter on, on his backpack when I come back up and seen him laying there. You know? So the letter goes to his mother and father, so I took it and mm -hmm. mailed it. Never thinking that when I went home, I had to face them and tell them what the hell. Mm -hmm. But I lied. I didn't tell them that our own airplanes done it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Any other story? I can't think of any others. I'm sure there's a little. So there was a lot of camaraderie there. I just do say we had a lot of fun, too. Mm -hmm. so you had a good platoon? Yep, I had no trouble whatsoever. Uh, so they were from all over the place? 
Most of them was from Massachusetts in that area over oh, there. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I had one fella, Stasinov was the same one. And it's where were his brother, so wherever one was, the other was, you know what I mean? Hmm. They both made it? The Stasinov got hit in the back with some shrapnel, but he made it all right. Well, that's good. And then I had that little fellow, Danny D. Francisco from Brooklyn, New York. The day we landed on the beach, he said to me, you pray and I'll dig. I, I, I said, the hell with the digging. You just keep praying and come on with me. I said. That's a good line. I like that. Yeah, you dig and I'll pray. He said, and then you pray and I'll dig. So when you landed in uh, in Normandy, what was the noise like? When we landed there, there was no sign of war whatsoever. Really? I mean, they they had to be back far enough. Mm -hmm. Now, see, it was supposed to be two days before. Right. And somebody reported out over the radio, so we held up two days. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, and and. They kind of moved back off the beach, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, the Germans, because I didn't see no Germans whatsoever the first two days. Hmm. Yeah. The, uh, what were the paratroopers like? Paratroopers didn't have too much to say. They were so fouled up, you know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't their fault where they left them off, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you'd sit there and you'd see the sky with all them coming down, and then, then they start hanging in trees. Mm. You had to cut them parachutes off and, and then try to hold them to get them down. And, and we went to Cherbourg, and eight days we was coming back. And one day one guy said to me, I think I hear somebody in, in that ditch there. I said, well, must be a German, you know what I mean? I said, but don't fire until we see what the hell it is. It was a paratrooper. He's, he was, you know, down in that hole. He had broken legs and that, and he lay there all that time, you know. Really? Yeah. And uh, you were able to... We got him out and got the medics, you know. Mm -hmm. We didn't hear no more, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was Sherbert like? Was... Sherbert was no, no problem. Mm -hmm. um, Moved right in and took over and set up security and moved back out. Mm -hmm. Well, Patton set up his own security after we took it over, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you weren't, uh, never attached to Patton, the Third Army? I'd, I'd be assigned to him to fire one day okay. or something like that, you know what I mean, but not. Okay. Did you ever get to see him? Yep. I'd seen him that day, he'd come in before any of his other troops come wow. in. And he had this armored car that had more goddamn stars on it than you could. <laughs> and he gets out, the operator and I was on, on the front line dug in, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? He pulls up alongside of us, and gets out on the hood of that thing with his field glass and start looking around. I, I said that. I operate, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's going to draw something. <laughs> it won't be Christmas cards. So uh, that was your one experience seeing Patton? I've seen him a few other times, but that's really the closest I uh -huh. got to him. Yeah. He didn't talk to you? No. Eisenhower shook our hands as we went over the side and said, I wish I was with you. <laughs> See Bradley at all? No. Nope. Mostly, I said that I was with this Colonel Van Fleet, which he became a five-star general too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good man. Oh boy. He could look at him field glasses and come out with. Uh, he was something, and good to the guys. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. What made him a good officer? Well, a good officer is one that stays with you all the time, mm -hmm. and he would stay with you. We had other guys give you orders, and then you'd never see him. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But he he stayed right there all the time, and he he greeted everybody. You know, good morning or shake mm -hmm. hands or you know what I mean. But mm -hmm. he he didn't think he was any better than 
the Haneda foot troop, you know. Mm -hmm. Any other stories you can think of? No. Mm -hmm. oh, I do like the one with the 88 over your head. That, that, that was all right. Wow, I still don't think I should have got to Bronx Star. Well, hey, you didn't know that there were... Um, it was okay. So, yeah, the head throws, I guess, you know, it's just you know, 50 yards, you'd be lucky to see that far. Yeah. Um, you'd go over on a run to get to the next one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you see any of the tanks that they uh, devised those uh, hedgerow cutters? It no. no. Well, they, I they had quite a Quite a tank there, though. Which one? That Sherman tank, that, or that uh, Tiger? Yeah, the eighty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. It was quite a. Did you get to see any of those? Yeah, quite a, more than I wanted. But they were pretty good gun. They get to swing around, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. But the first ones, they only had one hundred and eighty degrees to them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you knew if you get in behind them, well, you, you had them, you know what I mean? Okay. Right. The trick is get behind them. Mm -hmm. Well, they just had machine guns out the side. So. Mm -hmm. What um, German infantry, how do you rate them? Well, I'll tell you, they was there for the same reason we were there. Mm -hmm. And most of them didn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. And they would surrender. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am glad that I was in the European instead of not over in the Pacific, because right. that's a different type of fighting, you know what I mean? Right. We had heavy artillery and everything, mm -hmm. but they had them sneaky things that they couldn't. You were never up against any SS or I, I got orders one day from this Colonel Van Fleet I said, my radio operator, his name was Diefenderfer, so you can tell he was probably German. Mm -hmm. This uh, colonel said to me, your, op your operator talks German, don't I? I said, yeah. He says, look, at he showed me the little white flag and then a note that the colonel inside of this building mm -hmm. had all SS training troops. You know? And he is willing to surrender. <laughs> and he says, will you go in and accept the flag? And then what? I says, me? <laughs> I says, I'm not no damn infantry man. He says, at least your guy can talk to him. So I think that's holy jeez, got to go in there. How do I know what these 300 guys are going to do? You know what I mean? <laughs> So I get in there, and the, geez, the general in charge stood right there, and he walked up, shook hands, handed me the white flag, and he put his up, and we walked out. Really? Hmm. Yeah. And we had orders then, when you take them back, don't shoot not shoot on him, you know what I mean? Take mm -hmm. them all back, and and he, he surrendered and they, the, his whole group. So occasionally... Um See, the Germans would surrender. Mm -hmm. If you had them cornered and that, they would surrender. Mm -hmm. But in the Pacific, that didn't happen. Right, right. Um, any German weapon that uh, you didn't like to deal with? Would be on the business end of? No, their rifle and that wasn't too good of a... No. Not like our M1 and that, you know what I mean? No. What about the... And we had that little carbine, too. Yeah, they're light machine gun. That, well, they had good machine gun. I got to tell you, oh, geez, I got to tell them about Persian. We're on a move one day. We, they, we got orders to join this group and move to another area. Mm -hmm. So we're in the thing, and the, my Jeep driver said he was tired, but I think he was drunk, you know. <laughs> so he... He said to me, uh, will you drive, let me lay in the back and fall asleep? I said, yeah, I'll drive. We're driving, and my radio operator says, we could see people 
you know, way up in the convoy, ducking all the time, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? We said, geez, there's got to be a sniper somewhere. And this Diefendorfer said, holy jeez, I see him. Now he said, see that third tree down there? Watch how them branches open up every once in a while. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> sure enough, there was a sniper there. But I, I said to my Pershing Jones, I said, Pershing, Get your gun and fire it. I told him what tree and all. And I said, you see what's, where them branches are moving? He said, yeah. I said, you know, go ahead and fire at him. Jeez, the first thing, the Jeep started to shake. We had a 50 caliber Ooh. machine gun mounted in the center for aircraft at night. You know? Right, right. <laughs> he hollered to me, how's that, Sarge? Super dirty. Cut the tree off and down the counter. <laughs> Jesus, I mean. Somebody's getting killed and you're sitting there laughing, you know what I mean? So he was, um, he's one of your troopers? He, he, he was my uh, chief driver, you know what I mean? Okay. Well, he was pretty good with a 50. <laughs> I don't know if he ever fired one before. <laughs> Super 30, he says. We're getting more stories. <laughs> Keep coming up with questions. Um, let's see. You, you never got involved in the Hurtgen, did you? What, what, Hurtgen Forest? What was in there? I just had two nights. Okay. And uh, it's cold. Yeah, what was that like? Well, you can't see. It's dark all the mm -hmm. time. I mean, that's how the trees, how, how thick they are and all. Right. You know what I mean? And no sun, so I mean it's it's cool even in the summertime, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, there wasn't much fighting going on there. That day. See, a lot of times, like the paper and that, you see these things and you say to yourself, "Where the hell was I when it took place?" You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. There, I guess you had to worry about tree bursts. Yeah. I mean, if, if you dug a hole, you had to take branches and everything and cover you over itself over because mm -hmm. uh, they burst up in the tree and they go always. You know? mm -hmm. Well, any, any, anything else you can think of? Mm, I'm trying to think. Back in, we covered that. Uh, A lot of things I forget, you know. I am. I'm the same way. I have a hard time remembering yesterday. Okay. You did a great job. <laughs>